your CIGTV News update. I'm Shanda Gallego in for Donna Bush. The Public Works Department Construction Apprenticeship Program reached another milestone this week. A packed graduation ceremony was held at the Department of Agriculture for seven students who had completed the City and Guilds of London Level 2 Technician Certification in Construction. The event drew cabinet ministers, elected leaders, and senior civil servants to the department's compound in Lower Valley. The location was chosen as the venue as students completed a new building on site as part of their training. To mark the occasion, CIGTV spoke at length to the Kim Islands Further Education Center, an early partner of PWD, about the program. And we also asked graduates about their contributions and how the program has benefited them. Um, three years ago, we sat around a table, all of us putting our heads together and looking at how we could actually make this program work. It was very important to us at SciFact that our students not only had that practical experience, but that the theory was there and the academics were there. And so the students do come to SciFact three days a week. Uh, while they're there, they get a chance to reset their English and math if they need to. They can also take a science. And in addition to that, they are receiving theory in the construction field. I have a strong interest in construction. I started two years ago back with a summer internship at AMB Construction and then from there on I've been doing their, going there back and forth working just summer times and then I fell in love and then as I finished John Gray I went to SciFec and I saw the level two program being introduced from Public Works and so I'm here today. I uh, entered the program because I did a, um, a BTEC certificate in John Gray within construction. So I really had like it, so I wanted to like continue my like knowledge in the industry. When I heard about the program, I felt that it was like a great idea, because you go to work and you also have like classes at SciFec. So you'd have classes a couple of days and you'd go to work at Public Works a couple of days. So it kind of gives you like understanding of why you do it and how to do it. The apprenticeship program um, served a very important purpose in helping with the construction of this facility because um, you know the initial cost of construction is high and using the, apprentice pro the pr apprenticeship program to do the major part of the construction helped in cost saving and it also helped to provide the, the training that was needed for the young people in the field of construction. Um, it was a good starting ground for them under the program and so the collaboration with the Public Works Department and the Department of Agriculture was a beneficial one. Training of eight private sector apprentice mentors has taken this place this week through Professor Oliver of City and Guilds. This will supplement the existing 15 PWD mentors, four private sector mentors, giving, giving us a total of 27 City and Guilds certified mentors, which I think for the Cayman Islands is an incredible achievement. I must say that um, we were very grateful to have this the program collaborate with the department for the construction of the building. Um, the, the work that was done, as you can see from the building, the quality of work that was done is very, very good, and we are really appreciative of it. And so we just want to thank SciFec and the Public Works Department for the wonderful work that was done. And so in the end, after this graduation, the building will be handed over to us and we will gladly use it for our training and demonstration purposes. I am so excited. This is what we wanted. This was the whole purpose of this program, to see our students actually develop the skills to produce something and to be able to go out there and say, yes, I can do this. And so it's really exciting to see the work that they've done. I've heard people already say, wow, what a good job you've done. Uh, somebody over here is trying to broker them to do some work for them. Uh, and so it's exciting. It is very exciting to see the fruits of their labor. They worked really hard. They've applied themselves. They've studied hard. So it wasn't just the practical, it was a studying as well, and so as you can see, this is the, the fruits of their hard work. And that is their latest news. As always, if you missed today's news update, you can get all the details on our Facebook and YouTube pages, and of course, don't forget to tune in to Radio Kingman's For the Record and Talk Today shows. I'm Shanda Gallego. Thanks for watching.
know that planning permission is required for a shed? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know planning permission is required to clear land by mechanical means? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Boating, fishing and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan and share it with someone who is remaining on land stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities, such as snorkeling, and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four. In addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five. Also, don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911, the RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all! Did you know that planning permission is required for an addition, alteration, or any material change to your house? The 10% rule no longer exists. Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? Did you know that a trellis structure requires planning permission? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. The Esterly Tibbetts Highway three-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn.